The term handcrafted gets thrown around a lot these days. It's become a movement, a trend, that can obscure the passionate folks who actually make amazing things by hand. Their remarkable stories need to be told, and I'm going to find them. I'm Anthony Bourdain, and this is Raw Craft. To add a little bit more sugar. Ali, this is too stiff. You need to add water to this. Do you see the difference? In the pastry world, there are plenty of skilled technicians. Let's play the music, let's go. But very few of them are also magicians, like Dominique Ancel. He was the executive pastry chef for Daniel Boulou when his world renowned restaurant Daniel won its coveted third Michelin star and was named the world's best pastry chef as part of the 2017 World's 50 Best Restaurant Awards. Dominique's creations are not only mind-blowingly delicious, they also tell stories that pull at your heartstrings, make you laugh, and always surprise. If you're serious about food, you know who Dominique Ancel is. If not, you probably know his most famous creation, the Cronut. When the Cronut launched, it was a genuine viral phenomenon. Three days after its launch, the line to get one formed at 5 a.m. and circled the block. Scalpers were selling the $5 pastry for over $40 a piece. Even a bouncer was hired. Today, it's been over four years hey, since morning. the Cronut was introduced. Hey, busy as usual. Yes. And still, the early lines endure. Was it frightening? I mean, when this thing blew up, who could have anticipated that people would go this crazy for a thing? I mean, it was a worldwide phenomenon. Uh, you know, I, I grew up in a small town. Uh, right. North of Paris, like very humble, like uh, factory worker town. Right. My dad used to work in factory, and I would have never imagined if you had told me that you'll be creating a pastry that will that will go viral. I would have never believed it. You did not settle for for, for this. Sit back and cash in. You kept going. Yeah, and you know, I don't know if you remember or not, but we met like many many years ago, and, and you told me something. Mm -hmm. You told me something yeah. that really like stuck with me. You told me that on my grave, it will say Dominique Ansel, creator of the Cronut. And you know, it's a nice thing to create something new, but it really got to me and haunted me for a long time. <laughs> but it was a very important part of the story that, that made me realize that I had more to offer and creativity is something that any chef should be developing and growing in their kitchen. As Dominique says, don't let the creation kill the creativity. The success of the Cronut allowed Dominique to share his vision around the globe, and he now has bakeries in London and Tokyo, as well as a second location in New York, which serves as his laboratory and creative playground. So this is our kitchen. We've got a Dominique Ansel kitchen, and we're going to go upstairs and I'm going to show you the things. Welcome to our kitchen. Brings me back, actually. Pastry class. <laughs> I suck at pastry. Pastry chefs and bakers know how to do something that I could never do. A sauce, it's a little of this, a little of that. Uh, okay, it's good. There's a margin for error. If you yeah. don't put the right amount That's of right. everything, it's just not going to work. Pastry is science, yeah. and science has to be precise. So everything is measured, scales, weighted out. But there's also this, this touch that you need. And uh, especially when you make bread, croissants, it's, it's alive. To me, it's magic. It's every <laughs> time, and I, I'm envious. It's some sort of, of craft that you have to master, and you have to do it over and over again, day after day after day. It's not something you can just like, pick up and like, be good at it. It's something you really have to do for years and years of your life. You know, if I could live my life over again, I'd be able to make good bread, good croissant, and play bass like Bootsy Collins. That's cool. <laughs> then I'd be a happy man. The sleeper hit of Dominique's menu is his take on a traditional Celtic pastry from Brittany, the Queen Amman, known on his menu as the DKA. So the Queen Amman is something that I started doing when I was at uh, Daniel here in New York, oh. so just for manager meetings. And uh, the first time I did it, I was actually surprised that our people were lining up to get yeah. the leftover. Right. But there were people that were lining up were the chefs from the kitchen. Right. So you, some, knew you were on some something. Some of the best chef in town. They were like begging me to make more. First, a basic dough is made by combining flour, yeast, butter, and salt with very cold water. Our DKS are, are, are very special, so you need right. quick hands. And right. you also need cold hands, which I have. 
Right. Luckily. Right. I have really, really cold hands. Yeah, you're right. It's <laughs> freakish, man. So it's good to touch the door, to touch the chocolate. Right. I can do pretty much anything I want. Bad circulation, I believe we call it. <laughs> <laughs> so our door is essentially pretty ready right here. You can see this, this, this elasticity. Yeah. And we're just going to put it on a tray. And let it let chill. Let it chill. Temperature is a critical issue here. The chilling of all components ensures optimal texture while you fold the dough. You want pliable, but not too soft. So I'm going to ask you to do it with me. OK. Uh, the real trick is to go really, really fast with this. Right. You don't want uh, the dough to warm up on the table. Right. You have a square of butter for you. Uh oh. One for me. Oh, man. I messed this up so bad in culinary school. <laughs> oh, I was so unhappy. So we we're going to fold the dough towards the center, pinch and seal. Then the folding begins, a process of rolling out and folding the dough multiple times upon itself until you form dozens of thin, discrete layers of alternating butter and dough. And right after the second fold, we're going to start incorporating the sugar. So a light sprinkle in the beginning. So the more fold we give, the more elasticity there is. And the harder it gets to roll down. Oh, you're right. Now it's fighting me. Tougher. This is the step where things usually go horribly wrong in lesser hands. Are you tired yet? No, no. All good. So normally for this, we'll use a, what we call a dough shitter. Oh, it's a machine oh really? That rolls the dough. <laughs> you're just messing with me, man. Just want to make it special <laughs> for you today. Old school. <laughs> How many folds do you have here? I'm keeping up with you. Wherever you are, <laughs> that's where I am. I think it's the last one, no? Yeah. And we're just going to cut this into squares. If you want to see how successful you are, you can just peel all the layers. Look at this. Then for the shaping, we take the four corners, push it toward the center. Sticky, man. Not listening to me. You have to put a little bit of sugar. I, I, put, I put sugar. Yeah, that was a little better. After a final rest to let the dough rise one last time, the DKAs go into the oven, where the evaporating steam of the butter and dough puffs up each layer. Damn, it's a big oven. That's a big oven. And it's going to take about 25 to 30 minutes. All right. And while this is baking, yep. I have an idea to make a drink that will go well with this. Oh, OK. I'm going to show you how to make a simple caramel, but adding a little bit of flavor with it. So I'm going to use uh, this nice whiskey right here. And we'll use this to actually infuse in, in the milk that we're going to use to make the hot chocolate. Okay. So we start off with a, a little bit of water and sugar. And we're going to bring this to a boil. And what we're going to do next is like slow this down a little bit and deglaze with a little bit of whiskey. So a little splash in the beginning, not too fast. Oh, man, it's beautiful. It smells good, huh? It smells good. I'm gonna let it cook a little bit, then add butter. I always love this part. The butter melting, yeah. like foaming, it's creamy, it smells like buttery. It's my favorite part of making caramel. So right here, you can see we have a beautiful caramel. It's nice dark color. And we just pour it into the tray like this, and we're going to let it cool, then break it into pieces. And we're going to infuse it into the milk. We're gonna bring this to a boil and pour over the chocolate. Yep. And I mix it to emulsify. Smells good. And I think by now, all DKS are going to be ready to come out of the oven. Excellent. So you see how much the puff up? Yeah. You can see all the layers. You can see this beautiful, like, Caramelized butter. Yeah. Uh, I would like to eat uh, one of these. You should. All right. All this right. is our Belveni whiskey caramel hot chocolate. And before you have a sip, I'm going to drop this little marshmallow here on top for you. Whoa. Cool. It's amazing. So here we have our DKs straight from the oven, still hot. The best way I'll to eat the DK. I actually have one every morning. It's just to rip it apart with your hand. And you can see all these beautiful, like, caramelized layers. 
Mm. Magic. To invest all your money to open a pastry shop in a city filled with pastry shops. Okay, maybe they're not as good, but, but it was a very risky venture. Why would you do that? It was a very risky move, and at the time I wasn't sure exactly what I was doing, but I knew deep inside that I wanted to have something on my own. Not because I was greedy, but more because I needed to express myself fully from the beginning to the end. Dominique is clearly a chef who knows the value of a little showmanship. Like the best magicians, he puts a premium not just on delighting his audience, but on the countless hours of hard work involved to make it seem effortless. Chef Ancel is not just creating food, he's creating experiences. The food just happens to be his medium of choice, and his currency is emotion. This dish is called the uh, first heartbreak. First heartbreak? So uh, we're gonna build a beautiful uh, little uh, daisy flower here. We started with a chocolate cake and a chocolate cream in the center. Right. So this is rice paper. It, and it says, I love you. And then we have those uh, little petals that are made of meringue that we're going to place. Frankly, this whole subject makes me uncomfortable and a little depressed. What? You sure this hard? I don't want a heartbreak dessert. No. Heartbreak this, sucks. This, heartbreak is horrible. Heart, heart, heartbreak heart, is like the worst thing ever. Heartbreak some something that people talk about. Give it a drink now. <laughs> Already? Just thinking about it. What was your first heartbreak? Do you remember? Oh, I remember. I was 15. She was older. Oh, my God. What a living hell. <laughs> so what we ask uh, people to do is to take a match and light the dish on fire. Has anyone different. ever started crying eating this? Like, have you ever seen like, some people sobbing very, at I've the table? I've seen people very emotional with a dish. Yeah. Yeah. We create pastries to like reach out to people's emotion. It's, right. it's the best. Even before Proust waxed rhapsodic about his famous Madeleine, cooks have long known that food is a powerful trigger for some of our most intimate memories. But Dominique is not interested in just cracking open your emotional past. He's interested in opening your sense of possibility. Every creation is designed to inspire wonder. And when mm. wonder tastes like this, oh, wow. well, who am I to argue? I feel better about the world. See? I'm gonna go home and make a mixtape. <laughs> <laughs>